Hello, this is Derek Ward, Senior Solution Sales Engineer for Hama Vision America. And in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the basics of WiseNet Device Manager. Uh, to start, just open up any internet browser and search for either Hanwha Device Manager or WiseNet Device Manager. And it is nine times out of ten the top result in the list. And once you open up the splash page, if you scroll down a little bit, it is the WiseNet Device Manager software right here. If you scroll down further, there's a user guide, white paper, release notes, and A&E documentation. Once you've installed the software, we're going to open it up, and it's going to ask you to create a project. Now, I have other projects already in here, uh, but it is going. you will need to create a project. So I'm going to set new project, call this, you know, test123. And keep note of the project path. If you do wish to share this project amongst other engineers, technicians, or whomever, uh, just to review, you know, the camera IP information or MAC addresses or such, uh, this is where that project is going to live. And you can grab that, copy it over uh, to whoever needs it, and they can get the full report as well. Uh, it's also going to ask you for a password. You can leave the passwords blank. Uh, but if you do enter a password, please don't forget it, as there's no way to retrieve it and then that information becomes lost. Uh, but we're gonna have no password here, click OK, and I'll make this full screen. And next step would be search for cameras. Uh, one thing to note is depending on what network and how your laptop or workstation is configured, uh, you may by default search on the wrong network, right? Like if you've got a wireless card, the Wi-Fi NIC may be the one searching for cameras. Uh, so I wanna use the ethernet NIC on my laptop, so I'll right click down here, click enable, and it's gonna search for devices on that 192.168.1.x scheme. And if I run search, we can see all of my devices here in the tree. I'll remove one that I already have. And by default, cameras out of the box from Hanwha will always require a password. There's no super admin password, there's no God password. Uh, you always need to supply a password for first-time camera setup. So to start, we can do this one at a time, or the nice thing with Device Manager is being able to do bulk addressing of passwords, IP addresses, firmware updates, so on and so forth. So we're going to first select all devices, click credential, log change password, and we'll enter a password for the cameras. Click apply. It's going to make the request. It's going to say success. We'll close out of this. And then you'll see that we have all green check marks over here to the left. Now, if at any point you are using Device Manager uh, and you're looking for a refresh, right? Like you make a change, you need to refresh. Just click search again, it'll refresh the result. So now we have all our devices here. We can get into it. We have access. Next thing we're going to want to do is assign an IP address, unless you're looking to use DHCP, which as you can see, by default, cameras ship via DHCP, and the IP address is 192.168.1.100. But we're going to assign a static address. We'll start at 30 and go up to 33. Gateway's fine, subnet's fine. The DNS, the default DNS, takes you to the Hanwha Korean HQ. So we're just going to switch that over to Google for testing purposes. And from here, let's say we wanted this TNO. Uh, further down the list, or we want it to be on dot .33, I could bring it down, this X and F, I could bring it up. And you'll see when I hit simulate, and you are going to have to simulate before you apply the results, uh, you'll see that the associated IP address is now falling down. We'll hit apply. And once the IP address has been set to OK, you'll see the result is a success. And once we close this, we have our cameras, they have passwords, they have IP addresses, and from here, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, one other thing I would recommend, though, is with them all selected, right-click and go to date and time. And the cam our cameras do not ship with a, uh, with a set date and time. It's always going to default to the year 2000, right? So I would recommend always synchronizing with your PC viewer just to make it so it's on the same... Uh, same year, because if in like a month or two from now, you have an issue, you need to check camera logs, or you're having issues with the integration, it may be because the date and time is incorrect on the camera. 
So this is just a quick step that you can knock out while you have all your devices right here. So you can see it's sent, success, and from here, I'm good to go. I can now take these off the bench, get them out deployed in the field. Uh, there are more advanced features and other sets that we could look at, maybe in a future video, uh, such as reporting, bulk firmware updates, bulk, bulk and mass configuration changes, and last but not least, the ability to do bulk addition of these cameras, if they are cloud compatible, up to the cloud via the cloud connector to get them on the on cloud, which is where you'll need your org ID and org short name, but that could be a different video all in and of itself. So that's about it for this one. Thank you for watching.